not yet. Eh? Okay. Right. And uh, today we are going to cover as much as possible on uh, process strategy. Um, it's it's not really it is it is a technical topic. Okay, it's a technical topic. But it's okay if you if you have any question, please stop me anytime. Okay, don't don't wait. <laughs> please please stop me. Okay. Right. Uh, process strategy. So the chapter online is uh, first. We're going to talk about the uh, Harley Davidson company profile given by the book. Okay. Then we're going to uh, look into four process strategies. Uh, selection of uh, equipment, process analysis and design, uh, and we look at process service process design a little bit. I'm going to also uh, share with you uh, production technology. Is it, is it a bit noisy from the? Can you hear me clearly? Yes. No problem. Eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so Harley Davidson is a big US uh, motorcycle company, and <clears throat> uh, it is is a you know big brand Harley Davidson, and emphasizes uh, quality and lean uh, lean manufacturing. Let me see if I can see a kind of pointer. Okay, okay, so it emphasizes quality and lean manufacturing. Uh, it has materials as needed system whereby materials flow onto the production line as, as needed. Um, many variations in terms of product, okay, and very tight schedule, repetitive production. That means they have mass production, mass production, repetitive production. So in operations management, we need to design process so that we can meet uh, demand and also we can uh, meet our quality requirements and so on. So process selection and design is very important. Okay, so if you can uh, look at this, this is a this is called process flow diagram. Okay, and it starts from uh, frame tube bending, uh, and then they go to the next process. So this this is the flow. Okay, this is the frame, and it will go to the assembly line oil tank and so on, testing line, and then finally completion of the moto, uh, motorcycle. And uh, they are created. You know what created means? Put in a box. So Harley Davidson put in a box. Okay, so they, they before they exported. So in less than three hours, 450 parts and some assemblies go into a Harley motorcycle. Uh, in, engines are actually, from a 10 station work cell in Milwaukee. So engine is actually from somewhere else. Okay, so this is the final assembling basically. Okay, so assembly plan, uh, it says here, uh, York assembly plan. Okay, so we're going to look at, you know, uh, different kinds of uh, process uh, strategies. So we're going to describe four types of process strategies. So you need to understand there is common, commonly four types of process strategies. I'm going to introduce to you a technique, um, calculation, a little bit of calculation on determining break-even points for process strategy selection. Okay, how, uh, which, uh, what do you call uh, process can be uh, is the is the cheapest. Okay, amongst uh, different uh, selections. I'm going to introduce to you also the use of process uh, tools for analyzing processes. So there are many tools to analyze process, uh, either for improvement or initially when you start a new process. So you need to have tools to process uh, for analyzing process. And uh, for service processes, we will look into customer interaction in service processes because in service processes, Interaction between customer and service provider is very, very crucial, very important. And uh, identify recent advances in production technology. Just to show you some of the production technology available, probably you have seen some of them. 
like uh, computer numerical control machine robots okay robots uh, widely used in uh, production okay okay the, the objective of uh, okay sarah can you please read it for me the objective is to create a process to produce offerings that meet customer requirements within cost and other managerial constraints. Okay, so the objective to is to create a process. First, we we must have you know a process to produce our products and services. So offerings here means uh, products and services actually. Okay. So we, have, we want to have a process to produce products. For example, if you want to make, uh, okay, I always give this example. Okay, if you want to make onigiri, right? So you must have a process. You must have machine. You must have factory. You must have, okay. So this is, you know, uh, strategy. If you want to meet customer requirement, cost and other of uh, managerial constraints. So there, may, there are many constraints. You know constraints? Constraints? Things that uh, constraint. Okay, what is constraints? Do you know, Akiko? Constraints. Toto, Toto, uh, Google. Uh, Sarah, what's constraints? Um, kind of limitation. Correct. Okay, a kind of limitations. A kind of uh, you know, uh, things that you are. Uh, you cannot do okay major constraint major constraints when you are manager you have a lot of things which you which you do not have control for example now covid covid uh, resulted in many limitations <laughs> a lot of limitations supply chain cut off you know no no supplies late delivery and so on anyway uh, in in our case here we are going to actually create a process to produce offerings so going back to our process strategy, okay. So we want to know, we want to determine how to produce a product. How to produce a product? We need machines, we need flow process, we need you know a combination, combination of the arrangement of activities to produce the uh, product or service. Of course, to meet our customer requirements, goals, uh, cost and managerial goals, our uh, customer demands, our cost targets, and of course our human resource constraint. Human resource is also a constraint within uh, you know operations management. And also, we do not want to have a process which are inefficient. Okay, so it must we must look into long term effects on efficiency and production flexibility. Can we introduce a new product? on the current production line okay so those are the things that you know are always being uh, considered by managers in operations okay so basically there is four uh, basic strategies which will actually result into you know layout or you know the the structure so four basic strategies in any production processes or service processes it will fall into this even hospitals okay hospital they have um, um, process focus okay hospital process focus uh, repetitive focus process focus is normally a job shop okay have you ever okay if you send your uh, you know, do do you know tailor tailor they, they, you send your clothes to be made into a kimono okay you buy the cloth you send to the tailor so the tailor which process is do you think they they focus on is it repetitive is it product just a guess just a guess what do you guess anyone no need. I don't want to call names. You, you tell me if you if you have a tailor shop, tailor shop, tailor have sewing machine, have many okay, have uh, you know, a cutting. So which one do you think that that operations follow? 
I think it's product product uh, focus. Product focus. You think it's product focus? Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm not going to give you the answer now. Okay. Anyone else have uh, different answers or you know? Why do you say product focus? I mean, because the tailor should to customize the product. Mm -hmm. uh, every customer have different product product uh, mm -hmm. um, issue. Mm -hmm. So I think product mm -hmm. is the most important. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know number four is what? Mass customization. Customizing. Mass customization. Is it um, customizing to your tailor's uh, uh, request uh, for individual customers? Okay, we'll see it after this. Okay, so it is, it is actually actually not product focus because product focus will only have very few inputs and uh, you know a variety of outputs. Okay um right many companies actually work within these basic strategies they have these four okay let's let's look into them let's let's look into the uh, now uh, on the top axis here is actually volume volume from low volume to high volume or repetitive process, okay? So what we normally see is, uh, and the other axis, this, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Y axis is the variety from low variety. So this is low variety, high variety, low volume, high volume. So when you, when you say it is actually, uh, Process focus, okay. Process focus, uh, job shops, machine shops, printing shops, hospitals, restaurants, because it's process by process. For example, cutting process, then uh, sewing process, then uh, joining process. So this is process focus. So they have uh, uh, many inputs and many outputs but it's low volume okay low volume you don't make uh, many yeah we'll see after this okay don't worry and then uh, repetitive which is automobile motorcycle those are uh, uh, repetitive okay it doesn't go into high volume because high volume are product focus product focus are commercially baked goods uh, bake not bakery bakery is process focus okay but you know big uh, bakery you know big bakery or glass or beer or you know all these are product focus very few inputs inputs mean the raw material very minimum raw material but you can make many you know free for example chips potato chips they have uh, you know this size 100 gram, 200 gram, but it's the same thing. <laughs> it's only, you know, trying to, or bread, bread, there's a five pieces bread, there's 10 pieces. So it's, it's product focus, okay? So process, repetitive, product focus. And the other one is actually when you have high variety, high variety and high variety, high volume, mass customization. Okay, for example, Dell computer. It is known, you know, as one of the most successful uh, company that actually able to uh, mass customize their products. Okay, so the tailor just now actually is process focus, right? We will have another one which is actually low, 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 low volume, low variety. This is poor strategy. Okay. Because uh, down here, you don't want, there's no process actually. <laughs> there is no one doing low, low volume, 
uh, low variety. You know, low variety, variety means the different kind of products that you can produce. So normally we analyze this way. When you look at product, you analyze volume and variety. Variety means the number of variation of your products that you have. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, that will determine our competitiveness, whether we can compete or not. Huh? Uh, so this is another way of looking at it. This is uh, similar to the, uh, the one that I've shown before. Huh? So process focus, look at this word, many inputs. Look at this word, many outputs. Okay, many input, many output, right? Um, what else? Okay, so making cars, okay, making cars is uh, they they have many many output many input, but they they can form into modules, few modules, and they produce their end product cars. For for um, product focus, they have few inputs and a lot of outputs. Okay, and. Uh, for mass customization, many parts and component inputs, and many output variation as well. So this is similar, but only thing that is actually, um, actually the variety is more here. Eh? This is uh, probably wider here. This is uh, not wide here. Okay. Any questions? So so these are the four uh, strategies that that is being used by, you can select among this, okay? That's why in uh, hospitals, uh, that's why hospital is here. Uh, restaurant is here. Uh, I don't know, Starbucks or McDonald's. McDonald's is probably a little bit of uh, process focus and uh, uh, repetitive eh? combined because they make quite a lot, okay? Quite a lot. Okay, any questions? Okay, we'll just move on, okay? So when you talk about process focus, this is the characteristics of process focus um, uh, set up. Facilities are organized around specific activities or processes, general purpose equipment, but they need skilled personnel, skill, okay? And a high degree of product flexibility, a lot of, products, but it is actually very high cost, typically high cost and low equipment utilization. Okay. Uh, for example, maintenance shop. Maintenance shop, you know, they don't have fixed uh, flow of maintenance that needs to be done by, you know, by the skilled uh, personnel. Okay. And product flow may vary considerably uh, making planning and scheduling uh, challenge. In a process focus, scheduling is actually very, very uh, difficult. <laughs> difficult, okay? Compared to product focus, very easy. You know, you just put on the production line and you just flow, making bottles, just making uh, soy sauce. <laughs> the bottle, you just fill up, it's uh, fully mechanized. Eh? Fully mechanized. Right, compared to uh, this uh, process focus, right. Repetitive uh, is typical of any assembly line, any assembly line uh, facilities organized as assembly lines. Okay, so the facilities, they are arranged according to the assembly line. And there are modules with parts and sub assemblies which are already made previously. And modules, modules means sub assembly or you know, sub uh, components that actually has been uh, combined together. Uh, it is less flexible than process focus because in one production line, for example, you know, Toyota, this line makes only like, uh, I don't know, in Malaysia we have Camry, Toyota Camry. So, so it makes Camry and um, for, for another, you know, model, they make into a different line, different production line. Okay, but it's very efficient because of this, um, you know, uh, process focus, uh, not process focus, repetitive because it is repetitive. You make the same thing on and on and on. Okay, 
and it's very efficient. Right. And product focus, I mentioned to you, facilities are organized around products, high volume, low variety, long continuous production line. Long continuous production line, like making, you know, uh, drinks and so on. Okay. And it is high fixed cost. Why? Because you need to have mechanization, you know, automation. Um, initial cost is actually high, but low variable cost. Okay. That is uh, because you can actually, you, it's very economies of scale, high economy of scale. And generally, in product focus, no need skilled worker. No need. Okay. Generally, less skilled worker. Right? Uh, and mass customization is, uh, is a rapid, low cost production of goods and services like the Dell that I mentioned. This is an example of uh, mass customization also. Okay. It's combined the flexibility of process focus with efficiency of a product focus. Mass means many, a lot. Customized means, you know, according to different needs of customers, unique customer. Okay. So the, uh, how, how do we actually make mass customization works? Well, because it is a high volume system and it is built to order. You only make what is being ordered. Uh, and it depends on uh, customer orders and not forecast. Eh? The, well, there is probably forecast, but uh, much depend on the orders by the customer. But the major challenges is that the product design must be imaginative because you need variations. Okay, variations is needed. Uh, the process design is flexible because you want to make sure that you can, uh, when there is design change, so you can actually make that in the production line or in the process, okay? So accommodate changes in design and technology, okay? Uh, inventory management need to be tightly controlled. Tight schedules, sorry, the spelling is good planning and scheduling to track uh, orders. And it must be responsive your supply chain must be very good. Uh, so for mass customization to work, if you have very poor supply chain, meaning supply chain and supplier cannot supply the parts. So you are stuck. Same like repetitive, of course. You know, repetitive also require good supply chain um, uh, support. Okay. So responsive partners in the supply chain will make mass customization works. Okay. You know, for example, you know, Dell, Dell computer, whenever someone orders online, it will go into their system and it will go right until manufacturing, manufacturing, because they have a promised date. Okay, when they have a promised date, they say, okay, you order, for example, today, and it says it's going to arrive to you within uh, two weeks. So it goes into the um, uh, ordering system of parts, for example, hard disk. Who's going to make the hard disk? So it's already you know automated. Uh, hard disk made in uh, in uh, Shenzhen. <laughs> Shenzhen will actually you know, or maybe they have already the stock, so they just deliver the stock. But it is very uh, you know tight schedule, and you actually need to have good planning for mass customization. Okay. Questions? Any questions? Makaruka. Maybe after this, I'll show you some video. So this is the comparison for, for, for all these different processes. So you want to make, uh, you want to check if your product, large quantity, many, many, meaning you make many, and a small variety. Okay, so maybe if product focus is, so you, you start to actually look at where you're going to actually uh, decide. And these are the advantage or the cost. For example, high inventory, process focus, high inventory, high cost. Repetitive focus, for example, you know, uh, making Harley Davidson, low inventory. You can use GIT. Uh, GIT, uh, sky mask, you know? 
repetitive and product focus. Process focus, uh, JIT, contoh uh, muzukashi ni, just in time delivery of parts, contoh muzukashi. So uh, and finished goods are made to order. Finished goods are made to frequent forecast. So this is using forecasting. This is also using forecasting. Uh, scheduling is complex for process. For repetitive, very easy, routine. Start the production line and it will actually, you know, flow. It's a flow. Uh, repetitive is a flow. Okay. Product is much easier, <laughs> more flow. Uh, mass calibration, uh, sophisticated scheduling is required. Eh? So for in terms of cost, process focus, fixed cost low, low fixed cost. Repetitive, it depends on the flexibility, but it's normally quite high also for repetitive. For product, it's definitely high, fixed cost high. Uh, mass customization also, the fixed cost tend to be high. And variable cost though. So you can look at this table and say, look at the different characteristics of the uh, four type of processes. Okay, so if you want to compete with China, producing medicine, medicine, producing medicine. Okay, you know medicine, um, uh, you know like vaccine, uh, or even uh, tablets, tablets, tablets. Then eh, Sarah. Panadol or you know uh, kusurin. Eh? So which which process you want to to make your factory? Uh, Sarah, which factory you want? Which what kind of factory you want to make? What kind of process strategy? Um, just a tablet or. Uh, let's say the tablet only. Your 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 factory only makes tablets. Only not, makes tablets. not liquid. Eh? no liquid. <laughs> liquid nah. Eh? Liquid, oh. uh, tablet, okay, nah. no vaccine, <laughs> no, only tablets. Only tablet will be... Um, but, but many oh. tablets, you know, many uh, for... Is it large quantity, number one? Is it the question large quantity or not? If you want to make money, you have to make large quantity, right? Mm. Okay, which one are you thinking now? Is it product process or, or product? Eh? Product. Okay. Uh, it, it, it is correct. <laughs> okay, it's correct. Product. Product uh, focus will probably meet our requirements eh? because mm -hmm. uh, low inventory and then, uh, okay, fixed cost is high, but variable cost is low, so you can produce a lot. Eh? Okay. And it's like making a, a bakery. Eh? Okay, it's not uh, process focus, low volume. No, it's not low volume. It is actually quite high volume. Eh? Okay, so you can use this to actually assess uh, the characteristics. Now, um, let let's uh, let, let me let me you know, uh, cover this before we you know, we look at a small video of this. So this is a crossover chart example. It's given in the book also. Same example in the book. Um, let's assume that you know it's actually not the, the book example is actually evaluate three different accounting software products. Okay. Uh, it can also be <coughs> different uh, three different processes. So I want to actually calculate. So you want to evaluate three different accounting software products. Software A, B, C, the total fixed cost and also the um, so-called variable cost. Okay, this is variable cost. So the, the variable cost and the fixed cost is given. Variable cost depends on the number of items that you actually produce or make. So it says here dollars required per accounting report. So if you make 10, then it's 600. If you make 20, it's 1,200 something like that, okay? So we want to calculate the crossover points. Crossover means the uh, intersection, okay? The intersection of two different points, okay? Let me get my pen. Okay. So crossover is, if, uh, if I can just 
uh, right on here intersection do you know the meaning of intersection crossover points or intersection for example the intersection of uh, you know this this line and this line is this point okay so this is the intersection so this is so called crossover so if this is software A, this is software B, then we want to find this based on the cost, okay? Right. So how can we do that? We can actually do that by, first of all, uh, the equation is like this. So software, if we want to know software A and software B crossover, then you equate the same, uh, the formula is the fixed cost for the first software plus the variable cost multiplied by some x will equals to the uh, this is for a or volume one this is for uh, sorry software a equals to you know the fixed cost for software b okay fixed cost for software b plus variable cost for software b times x x is unknown we want to find that or the, in this case, is put as V1. Okay, so 200,000 plus 60 V1 is equal to 300,000 plus 25 V1. So 35 V1 equals 100,000. So V1, which is the crossover between uh, software A and software B, is 2,857 units. Okay, so software A is most economical from 0 to 2,857 reports. That means anything that is less than 2,857, we should use product A or process A or process, you know, uh, or machine A. So it can be anything. It can be machine A, it can be software A, it can be product A, right? Because it's the break even. And we can do that for B and C. So this is B, this is uh, C. So fixed cost of B. Uh, so total cost of B is equal to total cost of C. Okay, then you can find the break even. So between 2857 to 6666 is going to be B. So it's like this. Okay. Uh, the book says uh, what you call the book is actually giving a process. Eh? But anyway, it's okay. So this is for process A. Are you following? Can you understand? This is for process A. Uh, fixed cost is actually 200,000. This is the line, uh, which is actually 60 times X. If X is to one, then 60. So it will actually increase that. Eh? So this is uh, fixed cost plus variable cost for A. This is for B. This is for C. So this is the break even just now. So any, uh, if, you want to produce from less than 2,857. This is the low, low, lowest cost line. So between 2,857 to 6,667, this is the line. Okay. So total for process, uh, for this case, C. Yeah? And more than 6,667, we should use process C. Understand? So this is uh, you know crossover charts or break even charts. Huh? Uh, I'll we will not do exercise now. I will I will cover this again uh, next week for um, the same concept again next week. Any any questions on this? Do you, do you get the idea? Any questions, Akiko? It's clear, but I don't have any idea. You can understand this, uh, this, this calculation? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so this calculation is showing the common point between these two lines. So we get this, okay? And uh, uh, why we need to know? Because we want to know which process to choose. Okay, if, 
for example i want to make my target is only uh, less than 2857 pieces uh, for example onigiri eh? onigiri <laughs> again onigiri so onigiri i i want to buy machine a machine a uh, cost me 200000 and to operate it you know six, i need 60 yen for every piece that i make so that's why that you have that cost so i, I buy a bigger machine faster but cost more 300000 fixed cost going to be uh, high and but the variable cost is uh, lower okay 25 i buy a much bigger machine with robot 400000 but the variable cost is small low so i want to know which machine to buy if for example okay i if i ask a, ask a question i only want to sell 5000 onigiri which machine should i buy should i buy machine a should i buy machine b or should i buy machine c b yes you get the idea because 5000 is actually here correct 5000 so so anything between here you know if i target 5000 okay i don't want to buy machine a i don't want to buy machine uh, c robot no no i want to buy the middle only the the mid range okay so a lot of things can be done for this you know for break even analysis it's a very simple uh, tool and it is actually uh you know you can do this for how to find the break even for you know training program <laughs> training program there are fixed costs there are variable costs training eh? training give training or student classes okay uh right shall i just uh, show you a few video because uh, Okay, share sound. Eh? So you can see the 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 ah. Uh, I saw this just now. I I like it a lot. You know, I I can explain because it's not talking, so I can explain to you. Right. Uh, Mieru. Okay. I will just do the sound a little bit because there is no right. Um. So this is a production production of uh, car. making cars okay have you ever seen making car before maybe yeah. okay so the first process is called stamping process so if you see here so this is a a panel steel and it's actually stamping so in this is a stamping shop so a stamping shop is actually uh, so we will pick up this this is like the side door okay side door and uh, the the stamping shop normally normally the stamping shop is uh process focus so in in a car factory is is a job shop is only machines the stamping press is a process focus it has not gone in uh, once it uh, you know move to the next stage which is after this they go to the repetitive so car company has process as repetitive combination okay combination so this is still in the stamping shop stamping which is press makes the okay now this is the beginning of the next shop next next uh, department so this department is repetitive okay repetitive so this is the first step of 
uh, combining. But of course, before this is already shortcut. Okay, this is combine the floor, side, and the top. Okay, and it is welding shop. Welding shop. So it will produce the. Uh, you know they do they do a lot of welding they do a lot of combining so that the body stick together it's welding process yosetsu yo spot yosetsu so they combine and it's a robot most of them are actually uh, you know robot um, okay So this is still welding shop. Okay, I will show you. So there is four, four after this painting. So you can see. So this is repetitive. It will just go one, one step into one step into one step. Okay. It cannot be seen here. Lah. Okay, here you can see. Lah. Uh, so this one stage. Then one complete, it goes to the next stage. Uh, you see, it's moving. It's going to be, you know, transport to the next stage, next stage. Uh, this is the con this is this is the repetitive conveyor line and also almost finish the uh, almost complete what you call as the body body reckon, eh? no nothing body only. all steel steel body okay so next you will see that you will actually go into the uh, painting shop okay so this is this is just inspection uh, okay so once completed now we go to the painting shop so painting shop is it's more product focus okay <laughs> it's more product focus it's like you know just flow and go and dip okay combination of product and repetitive huh? this is dipping you know dipping they put a phosphate some of, maybe your first time you see this but this is uh, i I can explain from A to Z because I used to work for car, car, car factory. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is uh, electro depositing, ED, yeah? ED. Okay, we'll jump a bit further because I don't need to, you don't need to see everything. You just need to see the main, you know, uh, steps. Uh, this is uh, sealing, putting the sealant. This already not painted yet, it's half painted. This is the coating only. Because a car, they have uh, electro depositing, first coat, second coat. Uh, so all these are actually, uh, you know, the process. You can see the equipment. Right? There are you need equipment for this to do the uh, painting, to do the sealing. This is called sealing. Seal some of the gaps or the holes. Ah, now we finish that. We go to the painting, real painting. <laughs> this is painting, color, the top coat. So it changed to blue. You know, very interesting because you will see that this car is actually a red color painted. Okay. And behind it is actually blue color. So imagine the robot actually has different type. You know, the, the back is blue color, yeah? yeah? Blue, right? So they are able to actually, it's very flexible, you know, rather than you have to clean the holes, make new holes, right? This is almost completed uh, uh, painted body. So we have stamping, white body welding, painted body. So this is still repetitive. Flow repetitive. Eh? That gives, let's go to, okay, let's go, uh, once completed, once painting is completed, then the car will be sent to the trim and final. Okay. Right. This is not car. What's this? Anyone can guess. Give a guess. Can give a... Engine. Yeah, Sarah, engine. You're right. This is an engine assembling plant. So it is outside of the main plant, making that painting and so on. So this, this is a... You know, uh, side. And this is actually combination of uh, repetitive and process. Some of the, you know, uh, the small parts are in process, but this is now currently on a, a conveyor line. So it is, 
you know, flowing, repetitive, you make many, right? You make many of these engines. So this engine will go to the, uh, this is almost completed engine. Okay, so the end of the production line engine. So this engine will be transported to the main assembling line. Okay, so this is when the body, the painted body has been completed, they is dropped onto the trim and final line. Okay, imagine the painting completed, they go to the trim and final assembling line. You see Tucson, there's no, before there is no Tucson here, right? The, sim, the, the label. Uh, now they start assembling, the, they're installing the uh, so-called interior part, carpet, you know, uh, fuel tank. They start with the underbody first. Before they, you know, uh, this is engine. Now they, this engine is going to be lifted up and installed onto the car body. What is that? What's that? Akiko, what's that? Seat. Seat, yeah, seat. Seat assembly. But this is wonderful because they do by robot. Wonderful. Fixing tire, robot. Okay, this is wonderful. Using robot. Normally, before, we use men. But men, very, very expensive today. So they use machine. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, we'll jump a bit. We'll jump a bit. So now the car is completed. <laughs> See? Wonderful. I love cars. <laughs> I love cars and I love how to make cars. Right. So this is a combination of, uh, you know, the, uh, you can see here, because I, if I don't show you the thing also, but probably I just skip some of this. Uh. Okay. So we have done this, uh, uh, so-called determination of uh, process strategy but it doesn't uh, doesn't stop here so you need to uh, select equipment so selection of equipment is another decision so process strategy requires equipment and technology selection it is quite complex but all these factors are considered so you consider cost you consider cash flow and uh, you know, it's not here for me to explain the detail, but these are the concepts that is required. Eh? For example, machine that can ensure uh, quality, right? You don't want to buy equipment that doesn't uh, achieve your quality requirements, the, the specification, your capacity. Uh, if, you, if you want to produce high volume, you need to have uh, many machines, okay? And also flexibility. So all these are considered. Uh, so flexibility is the ability to respond with little penalty in terms of time, cost, or customer value, um, and it can become your competitive advantage. Um, and also, if you are too flexible, of course, you're going to be very expensive. So how much flexibility, for example, just now, you can see that making the car is not flexible, you can only make one production. <laughs> type onto one production line, right? Okay. But if you want to build in flexibility, then it's going to be much more expensive. Um, but of course, uh, if you want to, if you don't have flexibility, then changing the model, new model, new products is going to be very, very, uh, it take, take longer time. You need to carefully plan for any uh, new product introduction and changes. Okay. There, is a, there are many tools for process analysis and uh, design. I'm going to just show you a few, you know, a few tools, uh, just for you to know that we have tools for analyzing process. So when designing and analyzing process, we need to ask these questions. Is the process designed to achieve competitive advantage? Does the process eliminate steps does, that does not add value? Uh, we do, do we maximize customer value? Will the process win orders? I mean, if it is able to produce the quality that we want, we will win orders. We'll get more orders. So we want 
something that we can analyze uh, and you know and at the end of the day we will also be able to analyze throughput throughput means how much you can actually produce uh, within a you know working eight hours our cost our quality issues and we need to examine process uh, and continuously improve process process not only just do one time and you know stop <laughs> process is continuously need to be improved. So the first tool is flow chart. You have seen this just now, right? So this is called a flow chart. A flow chart shows the step. It's a flow, right? So that we know it shows the movement of material and we know where to send the material, okay? Uh, so this Harley Davidson flow chart shows, it's very smooth, okay? You can go any any uh, any process and document and look at the steps. Uh, for example, how to bake a cake. Okay, do a flow chart. <laughs> how to bake a cake or how to you know prepare uh, some uh, items. You can use a flow chart. Another one is time function mapping or process mapping. We say here time function. Time function, it will show flow as well as time. Okay, time flow. Uh, there will be some nodes which actually indicate activities. There will be arrow indicating flow, and the time is on the horizon, horizontal axis. You can analyze the ways, for example, extra steps, duplication, uh, delay. Okay, so that's the purpose for us to understand this. Uh, and to do this, develop this. Now, this is a baseline uh, time function map that has been developed, has been completed. So I said just now, okay, this is the node. It starts from customer, order the product, and then it say process the order, production control, send the order, uh, wait, plan A, do the process. Process is printing. Where about wait? And then move. And then wait. Extrusion process, some kind of process. Okay, there's two plants, plant A and plant B. And wait some more. Move the product and the customer receives the product. So how long to complete this order or process from our time map? Baseline time map. That means the current, current situation. How long? So, how long? Donogurai kakarimaska. This, 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 uh, to process this order. 52 days. So, 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 right. 52 days. Okay. Because uh, this requires 12 days. So, what do you think? Any, any idea? Uh, can you can you question uh, for example you know some of this uh, number of uh, the time duration uh, akiko any any anything that you want to query why? What, what can you observe huh? hmm. why why the order process is so long ah good question very good question so if i don't document this can i ask that question if I do not draw this map, if I don't draw this, can I ask that question? Can I ask the question? Can, can, uh, do I know that question you asked just now? If I have no record of this, if I don't have a time function map, I cannot ask this question, right? Good question, uh, because, you know, so this collect data, this you need to collect data. You cannot just have the, the uh, this is a tool, tool, correct? So tool, you collect a customer, then I can ask the question, why to have this? Nazir, nagai And then you can ask the again, why wait here? Nazir wait here, 13 days wait, kan? Damn eh? 13 days wait. Hmm. So, so that's why, you know, if I have a process analysis, for example, I can do a target time function. Target time function is actually 
after you asked that question just now. Target one day only. <laughs> one day only. One day only. No, no more, no 12 days. So how long now can we do the, the process? How many days to complete the order after come up with this analysis? Baseline and target. Ah, Sarah. How many days to complete the this order after this analysis? Six days. Nah. Yes, yes. Six days. So how many days can be reduced? How many days? 46 days. Yes, 46 days. Uh, so this is the uh, the uh, no, no, Kaizen, no, Kaizen thinking. Eh? But everybody know already the secret of uh, Toyota. <laughs> or, or Japanese uh, secret of uh, I know, muda, muda, uh, muda, waiting muda, muda, seven muda, weight transport, weight uh, motion waste, uh, you know, over production. Oh, we we will study that. We can learn that later. Eh? Okay, but but the idea now is process, process analysis, tool, flowchart, and uh, time function chart and many other chart process charts same concept same concept where you can actually document this is hamburger assembly process hamburger more assembly oh <laughs> hamburger more assembly oh meat patty in storage so this is symbol so symbol here you can see here operation transport so this is this is you know a chart and it will take us, so use symbol, time, and distance. We can distance here, time. And we can uh, see here, oh, this is quite good now. We can focus on value added step, but this is quite good, okay, 85%. 85.7% value added time. Good, uh, you know, working, value added. Value added is actually, uh, like it says here, 2.5 plus. Point two, eh? okay. Waiting is not, not uh, well, not really adding. Eh? Okay. Five minute break. <laughs> I will try to finish. Uh, okay. So you understand this, eh? You understand this, uh, this concept of uh, analyzing our process eh? steps. This is process chart. And we have uh, another one which is actually called value stream mapping. Value stream mapping, uh, again, you want to find what steps add value, what doesn't step, doesn't add, uh, add value. But value stream mapping, VSM, includes supply chain. Okay, so it includes uh, you know, the vendors or the suppliers. Because it extends from the supplier back to the customer. Uh, Okay, I'm not going to go to these uh, steps, but these are the steps that is required. I'm just going to go show you the, uh, you know. So this is a completed uh, VSM. How to read from here is actually uh, supplier from the supplier. So this is the monthly forecast from the manufacturing management. So weekly orders go to the supplier, supplier will so deliver. And then go to the factory. This is the factory, factory or the you know, company. This is the customer. So machine one component mount assembly test packaging. So five days order until receive. So this is starting five days. Only forty five seconds to do the machine. Three days waiting and there is inventory of one thousand five hundred and so on. Okay. No, I don't expect you to understand, but it's just a concept. Eh? Non-value added time is 26 days. Value added time is 140 seconds only. <laughs> so you, you only do job 140 seconds. Eh? The rest are just, sometimes it's necessary waiting. Necessary waiting. It's not to say waste, waste, eh? total waste. There are some necessary waiting. Uh, but we can reduce the, you know, the, the, we can have a future value strapping map to actually do the improvement, right? So we can ask question lah, like uh, uh, Akiko, we can ask question. Lah. What question do you want to ask? For example, what question do you want to ask? 
any mm. any any mm. question? How how to reduce non-value added time? How, uh, days? Uh, how to reduce non-value added time? Twenty six days exactly. So the highest uh, non-value added four 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 days six days. This is six days. Why is too long here? Six days. Uh, yeah. Probably that is you know uh, something that you need to understand from this step to this step. Why wait? So long, and there is a uh, two thousand five hundred thousand uh, two thousand five hundred inventory. I is inventory. Eh? Inventory means in the process, parts waiting to be processed. Okay, so to so that's why operation management. You now these are in operation, so you can reduce the inventory, so that you can have uh, you know less um, cost tied up. You tie up cost when you keep inventory. Inventory is uh, no. No use. <laughs> you only give money when you sell. <laughs> no use. You sell only you get the money back. Okay, that's you know uh, production service for service. We have a tool called analysis for analysis. Eh? We call it a service grouping. So product with high service content require different technique. So we have service blueprinting blueprint uh, which focus on the customer and provider interaction. It will have three levels, customer control, service provider, uh, interaction. Okay, so the most important is, of course, interaction. Eh? Service provider control, that means away from the customer. Customer doesn't see. Uh, and each level has different management issues. And you need to identify potential failure points. Okay, let me repeat. We need to identify for service, for service, we need to identify failure points. Okay. Can you see the, uh, it, it's actually in the book, if you can refer to the book, okay? It is, uh, can you identify the three levels of activities here? Ah, Sarah, can you identify the three levels of activities? This is a service blueprint for service at speedy loop. So this is a car maintenance, service, uh, service the car, okay? So Sarah, can you identify the three levels? Oh, yeah. level number one, customer uh -huh. is in control. Exactly. Level okay. number two, customer mm -hmm. interacts with service provider. Mm -hmm. um, level number three, services mm -hmm. removed from customer's control and interaction. But that means, uh, so what is service three here? If you look at here, what is the bubble here? The bubble says, Perform required work varies. Okay. Varies. Okay. So the customer arrives for the service. So three minutes. Now, there is a, okay, let me, if you are observant, okay, let me ask you this question. Okay, you have answered that already. Now, I want to ask you what are these from the chart? This symbol F and a green circle. There's many, right? Uh, Akiko, many, eh? Yes. F. Okay, what is F here? What is F? Failure point. Failure points, exactly. Okay, so failure, failure more points, yeah. So, so, so if you read the first here, what does he say? Pokayokes to address potential failure points. Yeah, Pokayokes to address failure point. So this is the first Pokayoke. What is the first Pokayoke state? Okay, so what does it say? Uh, mm, bell in bell in driveway. In case. Uh, so you put a bell to put a bell in the driveway. You know yes. when customer arrive. Uh, so that is a pokayoke. So that thing. Ah, uh, wakarimaska. So. so <laughs> yes. So service. Uh, these are the failure points. You know, if not customer angry, eh? When they come, uh, no bell. Uh, where's the uh, where's the servers? Uh, where the people? No, no people. Ka? So, so that is uh, no pokai okay. For I, I think you can understand. This. Okay, service blueprint is one way, and special consideration for service process design. Um, some interaction with customer is necessary, but the sometimes affect performance uh, greatly. Yeah, okay. 
so the better these interactions are combined in the process design, the more efficient, effective process, especially service. Service is about customer, eh? customers, uh, you know, interaction, emotions, and also politeness and so on. Okay. Um, so similar to product, okay, we have this uh, service process matrix. So degree of customization and degree of labor, high labor uh, re requirement, low labor requirement. Okay, so no frill airline from normal airline to no frill. So these are service factory, these are mass service, this professional service, private banking to commercial banking. Okay, so these are you know uh, service categories. And so for mass service and professional service, which is the top two quadrant on top, level involvement is high, you focus on human resources, and you need training and selection of the human resources. Very important for this uh, you know, mass service and professional service because it's personalized service. But for mass you know, service factory, mass and service shop, no frill airline, so automation of standardized services is uh, you know, acceptable, uh, and you can restrict your offering, restrict your uh, product lines, uh, service shop, right? Uh, fine dining is a uh, service shop, but it's actually uh, restricted offerings, uh, right? And uh, you need to control your standards uh, highly. How to improve service productivity? So these are the techniques. For example, separation. You structuring the service so customers must go where the service is offered. For example, bank customers go to a manager to open a new account, go to the loan officers for the loans, tellers for the deposits. Okay. You know our automatic teller machine, you know ATM? Nihongo wa ATM? Same. Same, ATM. Mukashi then. ATM, what you, what you can do ATM? You can only withdraw money, the show. Right. You can only take money. But as you go along, you know, now ATM, you can put money. Aru yo? Aru arimaska? Nihon. ATM, you can put money, deposit money. Arimaska? Is yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. But in 80s, 1980s, ATM only <laughs> take out. So they, they introduce more, you know, uh, more facilities inside there. So no need to go to the teller. So teller deposit uh, become very little now. Go or go to ATM <laughs> or self service. You know, unique low self service. Okay, this you can uh, check out, uh, you know, by yourself. And all this, uh, all this, and it's becoming uh, more uh, machine machine based. Okay, um, all these are techniques for improving service. Eh? Um, a little bit on production technology. I'm not going to explain too much on uh, production technology, but just to, you know, for you to be aware that, you know, just now you see the video, those are all technologies, eh? okay, all technologies for making a product. So we have machine technology, uh, which involve uh, cutting or removing or drilling, all these are actually uh, you know uh, technologies for production and also uh, service as well. Automatic identification system AIS improve data acquisition, uh, reduce data entry. So barcoding and RFID are uh, used uh, widely for product uh, delivery and so on. Okay, process control. Many processes, like the painting just now, you saw just now, okay, painting shop. How do they control the liquid or the paint? Or, you know, uh, how, when production, when the machine stop. So what, what, what is happening in the, you know, in the, those big uh, machines, uh, factories, is a real-time monitoring and control of processes. Real-time monitoring. So they have, this is the, Control room, okay. Control room. Uh, Shinkansen also have control room, eh? Shinkansen. Okay, I can't see your. I've lost your video actually. 
Uh, Twenty minutes. Can you see me or you cannot see me? You can see me, right? I, I've lost your video actually. Let me just let me just find your video back. Ah, so I've lost uh, the video just now. Okay, never mind. I couldn't see your faces. Okay. Also, cannot see. I do not know why. Anyway, just let me uh, uh, continue from where I stop. Okay, so process control and also equipment that is needed in uh, you know in the your production. Uh, I was saying Shinkansen. Okay, Shinkansen also have real time monitoring and control of their you know operations. Vision systems you use um, what you call camera to actually do inspection vision systems robots just now you saw you saw robots to perform monotonous or dangerous tasks uh, asrs you know uh, there are actually automatic storage and retrieval systems that can that are being used to actually uh, store parts warehouses for example okay uh, and uh, it saves space because sometimes they use uh, uh, what you call very tall buildings. AGVs are, you know, it's called automated guided vehicles to actually supply parts on the production line. Or today, when you talk about uh, health, health security and health uh, condition COVID, there's a lot of AGVs actually. Have you seen AGVs in uh, what you call uh, hospitals or hotels? I saw a video in uh, you know during the COVID they send uh, they send uh, food to the hotel room. Ah, so have you seen that? Have you seen uh, you know this uh, a robot selling sending uh, food to the you know hotel rooms of COVID <laughs> COVID people? No, yes. have, have, yeah. So th those are actually called AGVs. Eh? They are called automated guided vehicles. It has a track on the floor. It's just follow the electronic, you know, uh, track uh, or, ma or magnetic track to to the desired. You can program that. You can actually uh, determine the 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 movement and what you can actually bring along. Okay, this whole idea of uh, computer integrated manufacturing. Let me just skip that. So CIM is actually an integrated um, system of using a lot of computer. For example, computer aided manufacturing, CNC machine, computer numerical control machine, uh, and then integrated with ASRS, integrated with the robot, and also integrated in uh, you know uh, the design. So this is the so-called computer integrated manufacturing environment. Today we are talking about industry 4.0, smart factory, okay, smart factory, which is uh, much more complicated and complex and also digitalized. Today we can use uh, internet to control this, <laughs> internet uh, to do uh, surgery eh? from, uh, you know, from somewhere and uh, to do surgery in uh, another country or in another place. So, so this is, uh, you know, the env the environment actually, eh? the factory that actually use a lot of computer uh, and also uh, robots and electronics into their uh, manufacturing of their products. Okay. So in terms of uh, services, we, we already mentioned a little bit just now, right? Uh, technology in services. What is new in Japan today? Can you tell me what is new in Japan? Is uh, what is uh, new technology in Japan that has uh, been introduced last one year or last six months? Ah, Sarah, any new 
technology for services for services um uber eats uber eats uh, same like grab eats okay that is ordering online food yeah. delivered to your house yes do you like that yeah i like it why mm -hmm. any uh, why why because it's convenient and they sometimes um give me some coupons like uh, uh do they do they make errors no make in case of me there's no errors no no errors okay mm -hmm. okay so what's new for you zoo so, so what's new service uh, technology that you are you know surprised any any one uh, one service hmm? also uber uber eat <laughs> any any uh, or akiko anyone any one you can pick from here also you can for example you know, just say uh, i is there automated one person garbage trucks in japan automated one person garbage trucks uh. Not, not yet. I, I not don't yet. know. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Eh? Mm -hmm. What about... Uh, okay. Uh, well, we have now education. This is technology, right? Technology. But the te technology is failing me now. I cannot see your video. <laughs> the technology is failing me because I cannot see the video. But anyway, I can teach you online and interact with you online while you are in japan and i'm in malaysia okay education online learning online you know teaching mm. so that's you know uh, and it's going to grow i think it's going to grow uh, electronic check-in check-out okay how many hotels have you been that actually have uh, electronic check-in check-out any any one of you any any experience this one, the first one, electronic check in, check out. Once. Once in Japan yeah. or in, in Korea. Ah, Korea. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Like QR code, they they sent me some kind of QR code. Uh huh. And if I yeah. scan it, just yeah. I can get in. Last few months, I was uh, uh, in 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 here in Malaysia. The hotel doesn't have any uh, counter. <laughs> just uh, just send by message. Uh, what room number? If you want to enter the room, you just key in the uh, what do you call coding code number. Uh, so which is actually electronic key and lock system. <laughs> so hotel. So no no one is uh, there's no counter. You know I went to the hotel no counter. <laughs> then there is a. Uh, what you call just a, a signage to actually enter into their website and you know mobile web work, working everything is a point of sale terminals uh, e-commerce i think japan has many other things which are actually advanced i don't know you must have what else that you, you know you know if i go to japan then i know what you have that we don't have <laughs> movie theater movie theater uh only electronic ticket uh, electronic ticket in uh, for airline no movie oh movie ah soka oh electronic uh, ticket for movie ah, ah, yeah, no, yes. no more no more uh, paper ticket eh? okay hmm. Mm -hmm. well i think maybe i you know uh, when you talk about service many are transitioning into digitalization actually digitized everything is digital everything is actually in internet based so that's the the future actually right technology in services is actually using internet a lot ah, no. wait stop the sharing okay uh how many ah, i have time I, I want to show you a lot of movies actually a lot of movie but not no not movie yeah so don't, don't not movie uh, i want to show you this is very um uh, let me see a bit um 
you 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 watch it first okay then you give me the impression the movie so this is uh, you you observe you see and uh, then you tell me this is chaku uh, chaku line this is one product for car manufacturing so she's doing by herself pick up the part and put on the machine Okay. Uh, okay, I think it's uh, enough for you to give your your internet any opinion. So what do you think? Difficult process? That is cell manufacturing actually, cell manufacturing, cell, because it's one cell. Okay, is it hard work? Sue, is it hard work? Uh, if you work uh, enough time, it may be just easy. <laughs> Do you know that that lady works from 8 to until end of the shift? 8 to like, for example, uh, shift finish at 5 or 6. Eight to five. You want to work in that place, Akiko? No, uh, <laughs> kind of complicated, I think. A kind of complicated. Ah, okay. Sarah, what do you think? I fire with her. I don't work there because it, there is some danger yeah. to get injury, and mm. also she. Need, I need to stand up while working. Uh, there's no there's always in making all the products in the world they, they stand up everybody will have to stand up to work <laughs> even today mm. you know when i teach i don't like sitting down actually i like to stand up when i teach for 30 years i teach by standing up <laughs> for two years i've been sitting down trying to teach <laughs> which you know i get less ideas when i sit down you no know? if i stand up probably i get more ideas you can use standing <laughs> desk you can use standing desk Standing desk, ah, so ka. Yeah. Uh, there is a standing desk. Hmm. Hmm, ah, so ka. So, uh, I haven't seen it in, uh, there is in Japan, ah, so ka. Uh, yeah, I, I have one standing desk. Oh, you yeah. have a standing desk. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a good idea. I'll, you know, think about that. But imagine the this, uh, you know, this, a worker trying to actually, you know, this is a repetitive process. Okay, it's a cell. Really. It's not repetitive. It is, it is a, a product. Okay, no, no, it's a process because it's a job shop. It's a process job shop. Okay, it's just making one uh, product and then there is a lot of machines. Of course, only one person eh? and highly skilled. Okay, highly skilled. Right. Uh, let, let's let's see another. Okay. Now you you see my slide, right? Bottling plan. Uh, automatic bottling plan. Okay. High speed filling. So that's why you know when you this is. Uh, uh okay can you see the video yes 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 
So this okay, this is a bottling plant, A to Z, but it's it's okay. We just use this for example, you know. Nothing uh, very fast. Now, this very crude machines, but but you know it's very very heavy uh, you know investment. This is product strategy and conveyor line. These are conveyors, conveyor, you know, conveyor transport the bottles, the empty bottles. Okay, let's go a bit faster. Uh, so they just make only one, probably a few sizes, uh, you know, 500 milliliter. 1.5 milliliter, liter, right? So product focus, very high investment because there's a lot of machines, and you don't need high skill worker. This is low skill, okay? Low skill or no skill also. Just wait. The worker is waiting only. Just sit there waiting for things to you know. If anything go wrong, they can uh, you know do the uh improvement okay, let's move a bit faster okay let's see packing there is packing ah already label ah. where is the label the label somewhere okay, labeling okay so this is you know imagine you need to have more product you need to have a longer line long line if you have a very short line you only can make less uh, not many the volume is lesser okay and packaging so all automated even the packaging is automated right plastic packaging ma okay. any questions okay ka So I've tried to, I, I didn't have, uh, you know, you can Google ASRS, you can Google for yourself. You can, you know, look, look. because by learning, by looking is a lot better. Okay. I give you examples, a lot of examples. You can imagine now, right? Uh, so after this, you, you Google uh, Onigiri uh, factory. Okay. Then you tell me Onigiri factory, how to improve Onigiri factory. So that's the project. And I ask you to do a project. I show you the video. You see the video I sent to you? Video uh, in, line, in line. I share one video for uh, class project. Class project. Naika. I can't find. Oh, so I, I sent to the wrong place. Okay, I will mm -hmm. send it. Uh, I will give you. I will send you by today. I will link link in the YouTube channel. Okay, it's in the YouTube channel. I will link that, and you can see the video of previous student. But I want you to do improvement. Take one small problem, and you know, give ideas for improvement. I just want to mention one thing. In service, have you heard of uh, RPA, Robot Process, Robotic Process Automation? So, you know, that is now very popular, very big now. RPA, uh, Robotic Process Automation, where robot do clerical work, office work. Robot is computer. Just program the computer to do the, you know, checking, sign, so today RPA and that's why it's digi di digitalization and using the power of computer. Okay. So, so okay, that's your